Dear students, and today we are going to discuss about uh, the food security concerns, which is raised by many members, many WTO members, including India in the WTO. So, what is this food security concerns uh, in WTO? So, we were discussing all the last classes about the uh, agriculture agreement, and within the agriculture agreement, we talked about subsidies. So, the developed countries they want the entire subsidies which is given to uh, the, the food sector also food sector which including the distribution of public distribution systems like in India uh, to be come within the total AMS aggregate measurement of support within the WTO agriculture agreement. And at the same time the countries like India and other developing countries are objecting to this because the this particular uh, heading under the food security and also within the specifically within the public distribution the cost of uh, stock holding distribution and delivery of food items to the uh, poor people the separate sections of uh, the society uh, has to be uh, you know deleted or has to be excluded from the total AMS that is the requirement of uh, developing countries. So, we will see that first we will see that what is the hunger index uh, in the world and also is a definitely in India as well. And then we will see that what is the requirement of food, what is the requirement of food in developing countries, what are their special requirements and why these agriculture agreement uh, should not be applicable, completely applicable uh, to the, the distribution of these food items uh, to the poor people in, in, in all developing countries. So, we are going to cover in this lecture this uh, you know we have to see the hunger index because we want to see that which are the countries those who are require this particular special assistance under the food security. And uh, the agreement vis a vis we will see the WTO agreement as well. So, if you look into the total scenario we can see that so uh, the, the food and agriculture organization says that 840 million people are getting food through the subsidized rates through the public distribution systems of their countries. And this is very specific to India and also we can at the same time we can see that this is uh, the lifeline, this is the lifeline of the poor people in India, those who are getting food items through the public distribution system. So, in the, the, the last class also which we saw that. The, on the other hand, we can see that the around 3,33,000 farmers have committed suicide in India. So, we specifically argued that this cannot be completely attributable to the WTO agreement on agriculture, but it is a fact that this large or huge number of farmers have committed suicide in the past maybe last uh, two decades. And also, we see the, the last data which is available up to 2020 and which say that 720 or, or two, two between 720 and 811 million people are faced hunger in 2020. This is also increased, these numbers are increased on the background of uh, the pandemic uh, like COVID as well. And if you look into the world, it says that the FAO says that 2.4 billion people are lacked access to adequate food in 2020. So, and the chronic hunger index all over the world is around 660 million people. And these chronic hunger areas which you can see the FAVO, uh, the, the uh, map of uh, the chronic hunger index, you can see most of the countries are in the Africa and Sub-Saharan area. So, we, 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 there are substantial number of people are still within the ambit of this uh, hunger index. So, if you see this particular data from 2005 onwards, so you can see that this hunger index was uh, the people you know those who are affected was going down from 2005 onwards, but suddenly it increased from 2019. Definitely I am sure that this will be the effect of the pandemic. And the number of people projected are also after 2021 are also going up. So, it means that the so different happenings 
even in 2008. Uh, you know, so, you can see that the hunger index was going down only, it is not going up. So, it is now around uh, 828 million people uh, in, in, in 2021 are affected by hunger in the world. So, you can see that this uh, you know the latest data from uh, food and agriculture organization shows that the hunger index the number of people affected by hunger goes up rather than going down. And also you can see that how many people you know so we talked about hunger index we now we talk about uh, you know nourish undernourishment. So, here you can see that around undernourished people are 768 million all over the world. This is also food and agriculture organization data which says that around 768 almost you know equal to as that of the uh, hunger index or hunger people all over the world is undernourished. So, within these 768 uh, uh, you know million people, so you can see the largest is 425 million in Asia only. So, the sometimes the data are very interesting as well as astonishing and we will see that Asia most of the countries the Asian giants like uh, India or it is China or it is Japan. So, if you take Asia as a whole there are 421 the largest in the world still under you know under nourishment is in the Asian region and second is African region and third is Latin America and Caribbean region. So, in Africa it is uh, 278 million and the Caribbean region it is 57 uh, million people and then the Oceania around 3 million and then we can see a very small quantity in Northern America and Europe. So, the US and European Union is uh, you can say that completely devoid of uh, this particular problem of uh, hunger or undernourished people all over the world. So, who is affected? Who is affected with Asia and Africa? Definitely most of these countries are agriculture driven economies and the large number of uh, the population is also to be fed by these particular countries. So, if you look into this uh, hunger index you know. So, there is large increase in certain countries like for example, Congo. So, Democratic Republic of Congo we know that. Then another country most of the time uh, ravaged with war or some kind of conflict is Afghanistan. Another African country which we can find Ethiopia and another country without any governance that is uh, Sudan and the, the again uh, Rav you know is completely uh, the, the war ravaged uh, Syria then Nigeria. So, so you can find the countries in, uh, in, in, in uh, you know some of these countries in these areas are uh, you know the increasing these particular hunger index or the numbers are very much increasing. So, you can see that from 2016 specifically onwards. So, it is uh, you know hardly in 2008 little bit dip which we can see that and at otherwise it is from the pandemic time 2019 to 2023 the numbers are only increasing. So, here you can see that the, the words the you know the crisis. So, we can say that 108 million people to 193 almost 200 million people are completely under crisis. It means that the hunger index all over the world is going up. So, this is not a good situation when compared to the, the agreement on agriculture as well as uh, the, the situation in the member countries. So, the agriculture agreement or the agriculture completely the agreement on agriculture cannot be concluded without taking into consideration of uh, the these concerns of these particular countries. So, we can see the, the COVID poverty the, the food and agriculture organization attributes this particular uh, cause due to many reasons and one is specifically after 2019 the COVID-19 pandemic. 
then most of the countries the economic slowdown and downturns and it is predicted that in 2024 it is going to be another uh, economic turmoil all over the world due to various reasons. Then another reason may be the climate variability or uh, climate changes and most importantly the conflicts. So, for example, we can see the, 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 the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So, it is only the conflict between two countries, but the whole world is affected by uh, the trade, the especially wheat trade. So, we will see in some of these uh, cases that it is affected. So, the, the conflict in, uh, in, in Palestine and uh, Israel is also going to affect the world trade in the coming days. So, and I think probably the last priority will be the cost and affordability. The affordability comes only the last and all other exterior reasons uh, over and above the economic reasons has affected this reason for a poverty and is not only in Asia, Africa and other countries. So, uh, in my uh, previous classes are also I was mentioning about the, the, the Bengal famine. So, the Bengal famine was uh, happened just before uh, the, the independence of India. So, the trade, the, the stockpiling of the British, stockpiling of grains and uh, you know other food items from India sourced under the colonial power and which led to. So, you can see the, uh, the, the, the photograph uh, which shows tell the many stories. So, it shows the great Bengal famine. So, in some of the maybe African or sub-Saharan countries, they may uh, you know meet with the famine and maybe one of the reasons. So, in, in Bengal famine itself or 3 million people had uh, you know was undergone hunger, starvation and diseases and they died affected by. So, this was in 1943, but we are talking in 2023 also the number is going up. So, you can see that the, 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 the at that point of time the, the government of India it was uh, you know the, the prevented the Bengal famine uh, situations the government uh, wants special schemes, special schemes for the supply of food in, 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 in the countries like India. And if you look into the exports, we can see that the agri food and non agri food see in, in, uh, in the recent uh, past it was the agri food and the non agri food is always you know it is fluctuating. So, you can see that the trade in sectors the value it is shifting to the value added agricultural exports, value added agriculture exports. So, this nominal value of you can see the figure and which clearly shows that in 2018 it is a non-agri food, 2019 it is shows uh, almost uh, the, the uh, you know the zero growth rate and in 2020 again the non-agriculture food is uh, you know negative and agriculture food is positive and 2021 again the non-agri food trade has taken pace and which outpassed the agri food trade. So, here it, it shows the, the most of the economies uh, are uh, recovering from the pandemic time and the, the FAVO price uh, you know the index it, this shows you know very clearly what is happened in 2019, 20 and 21. So, and what is the projection for 2022-23? So, and you can see the, the, the red line drawn uh, for the price index. So, in one way you are recovering from the pandemic at the same time the FAVO food price index the prices are going to be very high which is projected to be very high in 22-23. So, it, it is like uh, you know skyrocketing the food prices all over the world. So, the developed countries like UK and other countries like Canada, so they are facing the food prices you know the, the, the increase in food prices. So, it is not only the phenomenon which is happening in the developing countries, it is as well as in the developed countries. So, I was talking about the Ukraine war, Ukraine Russia war. The Ukraine Russia war has severely affected the wheat imports dependency of many countries. So, uh, we, we, we think that uh, you know is somewhere something is happening and it is not going to be affect uh, the world. So, you, you can see that how many what is the contribution of Russian Federation and Ukraine in, in supply of wheat all over the world. And you see countries like uh, uh, 
for example eritrea eritrea is equally 50% depend upon russia and 50% depend upon ukraine for their supply of wheat now what is happening in other uh, countries like for example these uh, armenia mongolia or it is uh, you know azerbaijan 100% it is depending upon uh, russia so how it is they are severely affected by supply for the, the you know the for the some period of time in 2022 so it it is going to be severely affect other countries the food supply is going to be affect or agriculture product supply is going to be affect by conflicts uh, in in other parts of the world so here you can see that a clearly a linkage between the production and other factors and especially trade trade is directly connected with food security how it is affected with availability at the domestic level then access utilization and stability so first of all if you want to export trade you can see that there must be sufficient available food or or appropriate quality of the the standard of food for exports to be uh, you know present in a particular particular country so and also adequate resources for carrying appropriate foods for nutritious diet so even though if you want to import the food should be available in the international market then only the the quality food can be imported then uh, the utilization of food through adequate diet clean water sanitation healthcare and uh, you know other well being which you can find so stability the access to food always depend upon access to food depend upon access to food as well as uh, which depend upon availability of food whether it is uh, imported or it is uh, you know locally grown so stability is always important and all the countries look for food to feed their uh, the, the the their population so we were talking about you know role of trade and food security and the uh, there is a connection between trade food security and nutrition so these uh, three areas which we can see very clearly connected together for example as i told you that the the food supply is entirely depend upon the production and also it depends upon prices this is the competition in the market distribution and infrastructure labor market government budget all these are going to affect the food supply not only food supply the production trade and also stock holdings then the the purchase parity of every household income so the farm income employment of wages transfers government services food safety health education then again it is connected with availability access utilization and stability which we talked about uh, in in the previous slide so food security dimensions are very clear it depends upon availability access utilization and stability and the economic variables there are so many economic variables which depend upon uh, the trade and the agriculture production and trade so again the the food and agriculture organization says that there can be a mixed effect the trade policies of every countries or for example if you take india is uh, continue to be a net uh, importing country rather than a net exporting country so in with regard to net exporting country their export restrictions for example the additional taxes and other can be imposed so there can be a negative effect as well as a possible positive impact as well the only positive impact which we can find is the higher domestic supply and price stabilization that means lower consumer prices so if the if if the local uh, if there is more export uh, than the consumables in a particular country there will be uh, there is no the prices will go up and the availability of food will be less in the domestic market so always the government try to keep the lower consumer prices and the availability of food domestic supply is not interrupted so and if you look into the the the, the the other goals the national goals and global goals which we can see that net exporting or net importing so lower producer prices and uncertain policy environment create disincentive for expanding production so in that case you have to import the food products 
and then again the producers diversity away from affected crops affected always uh, it happens that the farmers will shy away from a particular crop which is affected in a particular year. And also you can see that the global demand for example, now the, the, the last class also we have mentioned that India has uh, banned export of uh, many food grains in, 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 in other you know. So, because the government of India one expect a, a, a production constraint as well as uh, the, a great demand global demand in the market. So, they, they, they banned exports for a period of time because there must be sufficient domestic supply and then only there will be price stabilization otherwise the food prices will go up like the developed uh, countries what has happened very recently. So, uh, definitely if uh, the availability is less and more demand and less supply there will be a pressure upward pressure on world prices and which is happening right now and then uncertainty. So, the conflict in various parts of the world which, which always uh, you know leads to uncertainty in the in the confidence in the global markets. So, the global food markets depend upon uh, you know the it is not one country or two countries the many countries those who especially those who are supply of food materials. So, if we come back to India, so you can see that we, we found a, a, a famine the, the, the uh, you know the famous uh, Bengal famine in 1943 and when you look into the post independent area the situation was not much. Uh, you know improved in 1964 65. So, the India was importing wheat for domestic consumption and we were not a producing country even at that point of time. So, 38 percent of domestic cons consumption. So, so we have to import uh, even grains at that point of time. When we look into our economic situation it is a poor economic situation which was not in 1965. So, uh, you know it was noted it was noted that the foreign exchange reserves the India was at that point of time 524 million US dollars not even billion and the value of wheat was importing to equal tune. So, what does it mean? So, we the, 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 the government of India does not have the, uh, the, the uh, foreign reserves even to import food grains wheat at that point of time. So, the, the US has helped India under the PL 480 program at that point of time allowed to purchase the US agriculture goods. So, that the government India can serve the foreign exchange reserves. So, we can see that the poor situation of countries like India uh, at that point of time. So, the in under the this uh, PSHS scheme. So, India has uh, the other countries other countries also where uh, uh, you know uh, uh, find it uh, so easy for uh, the import of food items food grains at that point of time. So, what India faced in 1943, 1960 uh, many of the countries are also faced like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Kenya, Zambia, Egypt and so very recently these countries has faced uh, the, the, the food grain problems and now the war is going on between Russia and Ukraine. And many of the countries, European countries, are finding it difficult. Not only for, uh, not only for fuel or not only for gas, but also for food grains. So there is a severe problem with regard to the food grains. Now we come to the food security, and the, especially the food security discussion at the WTO. So the WTO specifically says that they recognizes, they uh, recognizes the need to take account of food security. So, even though the words are used take the recognizes the need to take account of food security. So, at the same time food security is considered to be a heated topic in, in each ministerial conference. It is a negotiating topic. So, whether it is uh, you know happened in the last ministerial conference or it is in a successful ministerial conferences we will see some of the decisions taken uh, previous as well. So, uh, the developing countries mainly argue for a food security exception, but the ministry has also agreed on a decision exempting food from export restrictions when procured for humanitarian purposes by the world food program. But what about 
uh, if so we can understand that supplying to African countries and other countries. But what about the, the, the uh, public distribution system in India? And also the ministers agreed for emergency response to food insecurity. So, that also they were discussed and agreed upon and the WTO members actually include these commitments under the work program of food security. So, the committee on agriculture is discussing and probably the next ministerial conference will again consider to the food security concerns to be included in the, uh, in the, in the ministerial decisions. So, the earlier decisions if we look into the Nairobi decision of 2015. So, the Nairobi decision at the ministerial conference in 2015, so they decided to uh, you know abolish many of the uh, support to the agriculture sector for example, decision to abolishing agricultural export subsidies, agricultural export subsidies. So, we saw that one of the three pillars of the agriculture agreement to reduce uh, export subsidies. So, whether it is a good decision or bad decision, it will depend upon whether you export or not export, whether you are a net exporting country or net importing country. So, and also the, the declaration in 2015 says that this particular decision uh, is adding or contributing to the sustainable development goal which is mentioned under 2b. So, the, the governments to correct and prevent trade restrictions and distortions in the world agriculture markets. We saw that from the gap period itself, uh, these uh, export subsidies are considered to be trade distorting. So, in order to end this particular distorting, it is good that you, do you stop export uh, subsidies, but what about the, hundred, uh, the, the hunger index? And at the same time, the food security of the uh, food security of the developing countries, and the countries around 750 million people all over, all over the world, those who are undernourished. So we saw a red hunger index as well as undernutrition uh, index. So how it is going to be? This gap is to be filled. The WTO has not uh, discussed upon, and also you can see that. The public stock holding programs of many countries, especially the largest country is India. So, the state purchases the food for MSP that is the minimum support price, then they stockpile it and then they distribute it for a very low price. And the developed countries considered this to be trade distorting. So, here so, if you have to carefully look into, this is not for trade, this is not trading and the government is not selling this food grains to the people at market rates. The government is providing this particular food for on food security ground. So, these governmental programs are administered. So, for example, India is giving uh, you know rice for 1 rupees, 2 rupees and 3 rupees for different categories of people in the, through the public distribution system. So, this is this stockpiling food. So, I, I consider it as it would not come under trade at all. Rather, these subsidies which is provided by this particular government cannot be attributable to agriculture trade. So, this is specifically for these are governmental programs specifically for feeding its own population. And this is purely for food security, this is not for trade. So, this the, the argument of developed countries are to what extent it is justified is, is a big cost. Then and also the members now come out with uh, you know more transparent uh, decisions. For example, uh, they, they come out with uh, you know the, the all uh, ministerial uh, members, they discussed about the global uh, food security crises and also established for example, the, the organizations like UN Secretary General has uh, uh, declared in 2022 about the global crisis response group on food, energy and finance. And also the other uh, you know organizational setups like the members made 
so agriculture market information systems so this is this is mainly uh, uh, by the g20 countries because uh, you can find the uh, by the other than european union or uh, you know some other countries like the united states you can find there is a severe again uh, the agriculture or or malnutrition or hunger problem in most of the g20 countries so now it is the g21 countries so they also have uh, considered about the food security issues so and the most important thing indian concern is with regard to the public stock holding and public stockpiling of rice and rice wheat and other grains and distributed to people so the 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 countries like the united states says that this this is a subsidy trade distorting subsidy so you include it in the total ams so but it is the primary duty of a very sovereign government to feed its uh, population and at the same time msp minimum support price is required to support the poor farmers as well so the the, the developed, developed country should understand this particular point and you cannot look everything from the lens of trade and so i i already talked about the minimum support price so india by india india provides a uh, minimum support price for various farm products and and they purchase it and they stockpile it and they sell it they not not selling it is distributing it through Uh, the the public distribution system all over india so this cannot be at any cost under the wto disciplines definitely it is considered to be uh, uh, trade distorting subsidies but for for the betterment of the poor people the poor people in poor countries so this cannot be considered as trade distortion rather than it is to be considered as providing affordable food to its citizens so where it is uh, you take in india or other countries but still we can find that the the hunger index asia is number but the largest country is producing food whether it is india or other countries providing necessary food but india uh, the 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 region asia is number 1 in the hunger index so we talked about the peace clause earlier also and uh, the wto peace clause uh, is providing uh, you know a, a, a safe uh, for for a period of time uh, for uh, you know devoid of the countries from uh, disputes filing disputes so this this food programs are for the time being it's not disputed before the wto dispute settlement system so but india and other developing countries like africa is arguing for a long term permanent solution for the food security programs or a long term permanent exemption to the food security programs of uh, these particular countries so that they can uh, feed through different programs like the public distribution system of uh, like india and also even india passed in order to overcome this crisis and also the more beneficiaries for example the students in schools to be fed so lunch programs through the national food security act in 2013 which is applicable to all the states all over india these programs are applicable in india as well all over the states in india and here you can see that so how it is done by india so it is done through the ration cards of 23.4 crores so out of 140 uh, uh, the 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 people uh, 1.4 billion people in india so, so india has uh, distributing Uh, ration through 23.4 crore ration cards and this is a very small population which is uh, covered under this particular program and also you can see around equal number equal number of people are uh, benefited through other schemes as well so it is total you can say that around 50 crore 50 crore people out of 140 crores are benefited Uh, through the public distribution system in india at the same time so the developed countries argue that this stock holding or stockpiling is highly subsidized you can clearly you can very clearly see that these countries are us australia canada and eu those countries 
the highly developed countries, those who are not in the hunger index, is not even other European countries, not even South American countries, not African countries, not the Asian countries. So, these countries want these uh, stockpiling subsidies to be within the AMS. So, they say that subsidies to be limited to 10 percent of the production and the similar uh, reductions to be applicable to public stock holdings or food grains and they, they this distort markets. So, it, it is very clear that if every people are getting for 1 rupees or 2 rupees or 3 rupees or even 10 rupees. So, uh, it is, it is people are not going to purchase uh, further any more food grains from the public market. So, definitely the other countries cannot trade these particular products with the markets and India definitely uh, uh, invoked the peace clause against the argument of these particular countries, but the question is how many years more the peace clause is going to continue that is also an important question and before that you have to come out with a decision. And most importantly we talked about G20, G21 countries and here G uh, is a grouping of 93 countries submitted a proposal and which includes one G33 grouping and organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific states. India has proposed completely proposed a new methodology to calculate the subsidies given to purchase, stockpiling and distribution. So, the it is not only the MSP system, MSP stockpiling like uh, food and agriculture uh, organization of India. Uh, it is uh, and, and then again uh, to the distribution systems of these poor, poor countries or poor nations. So, this and also this uh, supply of food grains to the public distribution system successfully uh, successfully controls, controls the food inflation in the Indian market and also controls the consumer price index. So, always the, the consumer price index is under uh, pressure. So, still you can see that the food prices are going up in developed, uh, developed countries, but still it is under control in India mainly because of uh, the, the public distribution system of India. And very recently in, in uh, uh, very recently in uh, New Delhi, the G20 countries has uh, you know come out with certain decisions with regard to uh, food security. So, and the, the, so, they have taken into consideration of the COVID-19 period as well as the conflict in Ukraine and also they, they found that there is a significant impact on the distribution of uh, food grains all over the world because of this conflict as well as uh, with the pandemic also affected. So, the pandemic has completely disrupted the food security chains and now and there is a shortage of foods in certain areas. And uh, uh, gradually it is opening up at the same time the conflict in certain parts of the world is severely affecting the trade of food grains. And so, this and, and one uh, you know complete uh, is a disruption was this pandemic period, disruption and trade of uh, goods which has affected not only the trade, it affected the food security of many of the developing countries. And G20 countries specifically you can look into. So, they have uh, you know uh, they, they come out with the important countries within the G20 countries and you can very well see that the undernourishment most of the countries there is undernourishment was going down for a period of uh, you know maybe the last uh, last to last decade and but the last decade the undernourishment is especially after 2000 uh, you know maybe 90. So, you can see 18 or 19 the undernourishment is going up including Brazil the two important developing countries Brazil, India. Brazil and India also it is going up and like other countries like Mexico or it is South Africa or it is Indonesia. So, the, the, the undernourishment is going up this is attributable to many reasons. So, the G20 countries are also concerned about uh, the you know the food security of these countries. So, what is the position of the G20 countries? So, the G20 countries yes definitely 
uh, they have emphasized on the promotion of uh, sustainable agriculture development and also reducing food waste and promoting efficient use of resources and supporting small farmers, small uh, farm holdings. And they are emphasized on rural development and investment and also especially in uh, you know infrastructure education healthcare and other sectors because these are very clearly connected with the agriculture sector rural development is uh, very closely connected with uh, the agriculture sector developments and also the food price volatility is considered to be a greatest threat to the food security of every country so and at the same time so, the countries, G20 countries uh, asked for promotion or, or, or cooperation in, in international cooperation in food security. And so, the international organizations to develop new strategies. So, and at the same time, we can see that there must be a concrete efforts from the all countries to eradicate, you know, the hunger from especially from these particular countries and the G20 countries are also uh, is concerned about and the declaration clearly shows about the food security concerns. So, and I think quickly we will go through the Indian Act what it talks about. It is known as the NFSA Act, Indian National Food Security Act of 2013. So, this you know subsidized food grain is uh, you know this we, we saw some of the uh, uh, the, the data out of 1.4 billion, 1.25 billion are benefited by India's public distribution system. So, it is how important you can see that 1.25 billion are benefited by this uh, public distribution system in India. So, India cannot leave this public distribution system at least for maybe next uh, you know uh, one or two decades. So, because the, the largest number of people is, is benefited out of the public distribution system. So, quickly we look into the coverage of the act. So, you can see the social security. So, you know it is a part of uh, you know the, the total um, uh, coverage of the act there is a life cycle. So, you can see the there is maternity benefit, there is integrated child development services, there is midday meal and one of the scheme which is added to this particular act and then the public distribution system. So, you can see that there are two or three especially connected with the public distribution system midday meal and integrated child development services and directly connected with uh, the, the, the uh, public distribution system. So, subsidized food is given uh, to this particular uh, channels. Then maternity entitlements which we talk about and there is a separate act and most importantly the distribution of food to uh, the, the, the pregnant woman. So, in, in, the, in, in the country and through programs like ICDS, MTM and, and the PDS systems. So, the largest coverage is through the public distribution system and uh, the, the, the food is covered. And as, as it says that the government of India says that it is 75 percent rural population is covered under the PDS system and 50 percent of the urban population are also uh, is covered under this. So, it is very interesting to see that the 25 kg of food grains are, are, are uh, distributed at the price of 3 rupees, 2 rupees and 1 rupees for rice, wheat and millets which is the main component of uh, you know main component of uh, the, the nourishment to the people. So, this contributing immensely contributing to uh, the, the, the reducing the hunger as well as reducing the, the malnutrition in the country. So, so, wherever we are in the hunger index prepared by some agencies, but you can see that what is the coverage of uh, really what is the coverage of these schemes uh, under the PDS system. And the, the, the quickly I, I think we will take few minutes to complete and it says that you know the act very clearly says that provide food and nutritional security in human life cycle approach by ensuring access to adequate quantity of adequate quantity and quality of food at affordable prices to the people to live a life with the dignity and for matters connected therewith and incident there too. The objective of the act is very clear nutritional security and 
access to adequate quantity and quality of food for affordable prices. So, a large quantity of the people are benefited by, by this particular act. So, it defines very clearly what is a meal and which is you know this is with reference to a uh, midday meal system which is introduced uh, through this particular act in India. So, the, the, the cooked food is served to all school children through this midday meal programs, then food grains and then food security. And also you can see the, the food security allowances which is uh, you know shared by the central government as well as the state government and how they are going to uh, share it in between. And also you can see that uh, the, the food security allowances uh, under another under schemes other schemes and also the mainly the act which talks about the accountability, accountability of distribution checking a check and balance system is definitely uh, made and most importantly this particular act gives uh, one midday meal to free of charge to every day on every day every school day to school children and those who are in the local bodies and even ICDS project which we can see that they get food for the small children and which they are under this particular scheme. So, what we want to say it is uh, you know very clearly says that the nutritional standards of children in lower and upper primary classes under the midday meal schemes uh, you know which we clearly says. So, this is a impressive calories of energy food is supplied to if it is lower primary classes it is uh, 450 calories and protein 12 grams and upper primary classes it is 700 kilocalories of uh, you know the energy and then 20 uh, grams of protein is uh, provided through this particular scheme. So, uh, and definitely this is uh, provided to the school children free of cost. So, to what extent the agricultural agreement uh, you know uh, can affect this? Can you say that you cannot provide uh, this midday meal scheme uh, to, uh, to the children in schools and uh, you know small kids in under the ICDS program? So, definitely the government cannot say and uh, so, so we can very well say that this NDR scheme, the NDR scheme under this particular act, the, the cost is shared by the state governments and the central government and this at any cost, this food security, this contributes to the food security or the nutritional security of uh, the people in the country and which cannot be included under the, <coughs> sorry, which cannot be included under the WTO total aggregate measurement of support scheme or this cannot be called it as uh, subsidies. So, this particular act have an objective and uh, so eradication of not only poverty and eradication of malnutrition as well which can be found in various provisions of this particular act. So, and also the monitoring systems are also provided under this particular act. So, and in conclusion, I would say that food security concerns of developing countries has to be addressed in WTO and it is uh, the US, EU and Canada or any other developed countries cannot simply ask for uh, including this particular uh, you know the subsidies provided to these schemes under the WTO scheme. Thank you.